perfect grocery store makeup. Down first, it's going to be darkest. I'm just going to gently sweep it along there. So there I started with the first half. I want it to be a little more concentrated, a little bit darker on the outer side, and let it blend in and lighten up as I go in. So I'm gonna pull it, just what the product that I've put on there, I'm just gonna drag that in. I've done this a couple of times, so I'm gonna make it look easy. <laughs> it's just your warm. Yes. So your shadow, your contour shadow color. I'm going to touch my brush down on that far corner. I'm going to start blending it, and I should probably look at what I'm doing. <laughs> Just going to start blending it, and then I pull it in. And again, right now, this is a, this is a great beginner startup look. As you, get, as you get more practice time under your belt, you're going to start to be able to play more and get more detailed and do more variations. So are you blending the black and brown together? Yeah. So I'm going right on top of that black, right on top of that crease. And if I ideally, if I'm going to be blending, I want to blend it up a little bit above the black line versus down. Because I want that basically that whole lid area to be dominantly white. Oops. Oops. Pencils are typically easiest for if you're first starting, and it doesn't have to be super duper perfect either, because again, it's going to be from a distance, and the lashes are for the most part going to cover up that dark line. But, you know, if you do pay the attention to detail, it's going to show, you know, it, it will make that difference. How and high? How high? How, you mean like how, how thick of a line? Start as small as you can. Start as small as is comfortable because, again, there's that philosophy of you can build it up. Um, don't go too nuts. Um, all you need is really just a strip. Um, depends on the look you want. You can also go thicker to the outside edge and get a little bit more of a winged look. There's play there. But for now, to start in a basic sense, as long as you've got just a nice black line across the top, just a simple one. And I am going to go out a little bit further beyond the corner of her eye to connect it up a little bit more to where I started the crease. Do you see how I did that? If you were watching, I went just a little bit outside of the corner of her eye to, map, to meet up here. Usually, I personally, I'll tell you what I prefer. You play with that. If it doesn't work for you, figure something else out. This is after I've gone through several different methods that I prefer, and I've found one that I am married to now. Um, because I have the detail skills and everything. They do have some applicators that you can use. I mean, try the tweezers, see how that feels, and you'll save yourself hopefully a little bit of time. Um, I grabbed the lash at the base, or the band, that strip that they're all connected to, and I peel it off from there. These are all looped onto that band, all the little hairs. So if you grab the hairs, you can rip them off, strip them off of that band, if that makes sense. So I always grab the lash with my tweezers at the band when I remove it. And I get it in my fingers. And I usually hold on to the hair part with my fingers because this has a little bit of stick -em on it. And it just makes it a little bit easier. Then what I do, go ahead and keep your eyes open, actually. I'm just going to rest this on her eye. And these really aren't, these are not as drama as you could go, but these will be great for, I think, the girls. Um, just not the boys. <laughs> well, it depends what, yeah, what they'll be performing for. That'll be a different type of <laughs> so, 
So I just rested the, the, the eyelash on her natural lashes. I'm not gluing it on right now. What I'm doing is I'm measuring it to see if it fits her eye. Okay? And what I think I'm going to do is probably trim just a little bit off the outer corner because you see how it goes a little bit past that outer corner and makes it look a little bit droopy. A little bit. So I get a little bit of a bubble on the top or the tip. And I gently run my lash on top of that. Bless you. Yeah, bless you over there. So you're holding up the lashes then? I'm holding the lash, the lash band down. The glue goes up. Because if we reverse that equation, we've got gravity working against us and could very easily have a very, very overly sticky eyelash, and that wouldn't be a happy time for anybody. <laughs> and then I, you know, I just want to make sure that I've got a nice, even thin strip of glue all the way across. I tend to make sure that I've got a good amount on either corner, because those little corners like to lift. So that's one thing to look out for. It's always good to have um, some extra glue on hand in case the lashes start to lift off at the corners. Go ahead and look straight ahead. I find that it's absolutely easiest to put lashes on when my eyes are at least a little bit open because my eyes aren't normally closed and your skin will change. If you put your lash on, obviously you personally can't really put your lashes on when your eyes are closed and that's a good thing. Because if you do it that way and then open your eye, It'll feel a little bit awkward as the skin will stretch around your eye shape as it opens and closes. So I like to put it on. I'm going to have you follow my finger. Right about there is perfect. Just go ahead and hold it as best you can. And I'm going to do kind of a dive in. Up and down. Up and over. I set it on in the middle first. And attach at the corners. Good job. Perfect. Ooh. <laughs> now you can see her. <laughs>
But if you use this kind of brush, I just buff it in. And I like the fluffy brush because they, they, they're not as aggressive with moving the product. They kind of let it sit where it lies and you just buff it out. <laughs> and by using a high quality, high pigmented concealer, you need to you get to use a lot less, which again means it'll last longer. If you sweat, it's going to stay put. It's much more likely to work with you rather than against you. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Concealer was a little tiny bit lighter, so rather than worrying about it in that moment, I'm just going to correct it however I want with the powder. So you have you actually have a ton of options and, and variations and control. But yes, I don't I don't necessarily again color match all the way through. I'm always kind of adjusting with undertones and shades, but that's I mean a little more involved than. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to worry about, but, but yeah. Get a, get out Just when I'm telling them what to buy and what to do, it'll help direct. Yeah, and you know, it, it is. It's hard to try to get everything covered and everything perfect, mm -hmm. you know, in one shot. So I mean, it's ambitious. We'll definitely do our best with that. But really, it takes time and practice, and just getting your hands dirty mm -hmm. with the process. And, Taking some information, some tips, and then running with it. <laughs> and exploring, and of course, making mistakes. That just looks a little more soft and natural, mm -hmm. you know? So I just kind of balance it out a few different ways, actually. And again, I'm focusing in the center of the face with the powder, because that needs the most coverage usually. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just kind of swirl around a little bit of a darker shade on the, on the frame. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Made you smile. It helps. Different face colors and tones that I've got here on my palette. This one here, I actually use as a highlighter. It's, it's pretty much lighter than almost any skin tone. So it's so I use that as a highlighter to brighten certain areas. This is a lot closer to her natural skin tone, so I'm focusing on using this. And what I'm really doing is I'm like I'm mixing colors like an artist would. You know, for if you're oh, that's not quite the right shade of blue for my sky. I'm tweaking it. So what I'm really focusing on doing when I look at her is getting a uh, again a, that brightened middle of the face. And then what I'm going to go do, and also I'm using that brush to get more coverage. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to a fluffier brush to get lighter coverage because she doesn't need as much color correcting on the outside of her face. And I'm going to go with a color that's a, a shade that's a little bit warmer or a little bit deeper. Not crazy. You look from there to there, it's probably hard to tell the difference, even from here to there. But it's subtle, and it's just that above and beyond attention to detail that I personally really like, and it makes a difference when people see your face, but they don't understand why. And it's kind of sneaky, but it's kind of that trade secret kind of territory. Um, otherwise, an easier option is to do a somewhat lighter color on your whole face, and then you can just go in and contour with some blush or some contouring powder bronzer or whatever you like. And I'm just going to dust that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I work on start small. Start small and think in terms of dashes. No, that's probably too light. Maybe you just get away with that here. That would be better. Maybe a mix of both. But that's a little bit bronzy. You know what I mean? Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is turn your chin this way. We're going to talk about contouring. I'm going to take my brush, and I'm going to bury it pretty much right in her sideburn, right there. Sideburn. <laughs> right where the, right where her hairline starts, right by the crease of that in her ear. I'm going to start there, and then I'm just going to. Now this is a technique that I'm doing that is going to be helpful for you girls if you try. 
I'm doing just a little back and forth dash. Can you give me a sideburns? Heck yeah, brother. <laughs> Heck yes, brother, get up here. <laughs> we'll give you a Hulk stash. <laughs> Can you see what I just did there? And how that's creating a shadow on her face? It's almost probably so natural or subtle that it looks like it's supposed to be there. So basically, the other side of her face would look almost straight flat ahead. and weird. Maybe that would be a good contrast. Can I see which way you're using? Yeah. Now, yeah. 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 now be careful when you're. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm contouring a chin bone for her, <laughs> or a jawline, I should say. Now be careful not to just put on a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> Keep it underneath because we want it to go intuitively where a shadow would go, which would be right underneath here. Okay, and I do take it up, follow that jawline all the way behind the ear. I know it seems weird, but you just wait till we get it all put together and then it's going to be so cool. Okay, so we've got that. I'll also, sometimes I'll go in just a little bit at the temples. This would be another good option for a bronzer, but if you, if you don't have a lot of options and you don't want to spend a lot of time switching out powders, you could do this either with a bronzer or with a contour and let it, you know, work multiple jobs. The main, the main focus that I go for when I contour or I put on the face makeup is that I want to brighten through here and I want a soft, warm frame around the face. What that does is it creates depth and it creates dimension and it draws the face out and makes it pop. Okay. This has a lot of shimmer in it that I'm using. I'm using it kind of as a bronzy highlight. Okay. Anything that has shimmer is going to attract light and that's, that's going to bring things forward. So I want to put it at highlight points like high parts of the cheekbone where sun would touch as well, and I'll bring it up through the temples. So above, like, um, contour, bronzer, blusher can go kind of interchangeably. I tend to bring the blush maybe a little bit more forward and the contour and bronzer a little more back. So I'm going to take this highlighting color, this really light color, remember? I'm going to wiggle my brush in there. And I'm going to pop a little bit of highlight right on that top part of her cheekbone. And I'm actually going to drag it all the way back to the hairline. So this, this kind of like, think superhero mask. <laughs> that patch, you want to actually highlight just a little bit. And so by playing with your powders, if you have a good highlighter, you can correct that without having to necessarily take anything off whatsoever. Just highlight through there. A lot of times I'll bring it up through the eye or through underneath the eye. You could even take a little bit of shimmer that I usually use very sparingly. I know how fun it is, but trust me. <laughs> and even pop a little bit of shimmer on there. And that's just another, another technique of color correcting is going in with a different color to kind of counterbalance that. Higher sometimes a little bit more and if you've got the apple cheeks. But for now, a good general rule of thumb is I just touch it on a little bit in front of the bronzer and contouring, okay? And when I do my blush, I dab it on, I give it the little shake so it's not too much, and then when I touch my brush to it, I do just a little twist too. You don't have to do that, but it just does a little bit more even. And if you've noticed, I have. I've used the same brush for these. Um, it's like a medium-sized brush. It's not so small for the eye. It's not. So, we start with contour, bronzer if you want it. You don't always need it, but it's an option for you if you use it. Blush through here, and highlight stacked on top, at the top of your cheekbone. Okay? You could do just contour, highlight, blush, contour, bronzer, highlight. You could take out one or the other for blush or bronzer. It's so pretty. <laughs> Did you do the other side? Yep. Some other areas or options for highlighting if you want to go in with that extra light powder are over the eyebrows, down the nose, through here, under the eyes, kind of through focusing on that T-zone center of the face area. Then we're going to talk brows. And you can do that with just a light, a really bright 
So I'm going to go in with my brush, which should, in some cases would be your pencil. I'm going to start at the inner corner of the brow towards the bottom. Now I don't want to make the brow any bigger than it is, but I want to start at the bottom of where the hair is. And then I'm going to pull it in. That's a good shot. I did take these clips to make a good training video. Edit them all together. <laughs> and then I'm going to pull the product up. So essentially I'm drawing a little line at the base of the hair of my brow line. And if your brows need a little reshaping, go beyond where Short, they sit small naturally. strokes, and I'm pulling the product along the bottom. Even there, see where it's a little bit imperfect? You probably wouldn't need to even pay attention to that, but you could go in there and tweak mm -hmm. it, and we're going to do a highlight that will cover that up, which is nice. So there are certain little goofs or just natural mistakes that will happen. But there's always ways to go in and correct it without worry. 